Perfect. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cloud Engineering and DevOps Workshop. Uh, thank you for joining and sparing this time with us today. Uh, during this five weeks program, we will explore the fundamental, the fundamental principles and tools and technologies and practices that at the end are the heart of cloud engineering and DevOps. So we have Omar on the workshop uh, here uh, joining us uh, to me. Uh, he will be helping us in specific topics and also helping us uh, with multiple demos and hands-on ex exercise that he will be performing along this five weeks course. Uh, please welcome him. Uh, so how are you today, Omar? Uh, will you mind presenting us uh, you know, for the others? Uh, hey, Andres. Hey, guys. Yeah, thank you. Like uh, Andres mentioned, uh, pretty excited to be here with you guys uh, showing this CloudOps workshop. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of myself. I'm uh, Omar Mejia. I'm a web developer here at Atmios. And uh, I'm basically going to be assisting Andres during uh, some of our workshop sessions, uh, sometimes taking over the presentation or going, going over some demos for you guys. And uh, well, I've definitely worked uh, with DevOps tools and the cloud. Um, I'm still very much rookie when it comes to like some of these concepts. So I'm here to like be this um, newbie kind of like learner from Andres, and also, uh, yeah, be with you guys in this uh, learning journey. Perfect. Thank you, Omar, for presenting us. Uh, so uh, about myself, uh, Andres. I'm Andres Peda. I've been working as a DevOps engineer for the last uh, seven years now. Uh, joining uh, Admias multiple times, well, second, two times. I've uh, been working with multiple clients as well uh, from all around the world, and that has allowed me like to, to experience, you know, these technologies that we'll explore and how, you know, different clients apply them uh, in different ways, right? So, you know, this is this is me. So let's start right in. So we, we will cover like the agenda for these five weeks. This will be really, really, uh, you know, just the overall, overall of, of the topics. We'll start this week, this is Thursday, uh, with operating systems and bash scripting, and then we'll jump into networking 101. At the same time, next week, we will have like the DevOps culture, the DevOps history, and software development lifecycle, one of the core components of, of DevOps. And soon after, we'll jump into CICD. Uh, week three is all about containers, uh, container orchestration, and cloud providers as well. We will start. Uh, diving as well on, on how to work with cloud providers and you know, what, what we use day to day on, on cloud engineering and DevOps. Uh, week four will be like the cloud well architect framework. This is like a set of practices that you know cloud providers recommend when working with their you know services with the with their clouds. And then we will work with serverless as well. We will be doing some uh, demonstrations on deployments and working you know with serverless architectures and environments. Uh, lastly, week five will be container orchestration, another key topic of DevOps and you know the entire ecosystem of, of cloud. And we will be finishing off with infrastructure as code. So this will be like the the most complex, I will say, week because this is like the, the main tools and technologies that a day-to-day -day DevOps might work, you know, in a, in a specific project. So the goals of this workshop, and again, thanks for joining and sharing your time with us is literally, you know, introduce you to the world of DevOps, right? What it is, what it isn't, and, you know, how it affects or, uh, you know, affects your, your daily work as a software developer, or, you know, even an IT person that, you know, is working with computers. It also provide you with a solid foundation in cloud computing. You know, our goal is to open the mind or open your, your doors to, you know, explore cloud services, the cloud providers themselves and you know how you can start leveraging their services and start working on perhaps a project or you know your you know side projects or you know you're with your current clients also another one is give you like the practical knowledge of cloud services models and you know the providers uh, also one of the main goals as well is like to empower you with the hands-on skills and exercises for more uh, sorry for modern cloud operations so you have like the tool set and you know the ability to start you know exploring playing around you know with these technologies uh, and lastly you know also important is to foster the collaborate collaboration and facilitate you you know through the learning journey uh, with Omar and myself you know we are ready to you know answer questions to start discussions on a specific topic that might you might you know have or you know might occur with where you know while we are doing this workshop. So these are the main goals, you know, of why we are, you know, taking the time with Omar, with Amazon, developing 
this entire uh, you know agenda and you know the syllabus and you know, now you know doing the exploration of these topics so we also have this github repository that we will be sharing well you know this slides will be shared as well and this github repository we have all the code that we will be explaining and working with at the same time has some specific use cases and readmes in order to you know navigate through uh, the entire weeks and you know the actual files that we have in there so that's it let's start with week one you know, this is the part one again it's the first one so we'll start with you know uh, operating systems the windows and linux they will be just be like a theoretical uh, you know theoretical part really quick i would say uh, soon after we'll jump into bash scripting which is one of the core components of automation uh, you know in the entire industry of it and nevertheless you know we are still using that tools you know bash scripting uh, into DevOps and cloud engineering operations day to day. Uh, we will explore some specific automation examples, and soon after we will work on networking fundamentals and DNS that will be covered next week. So starting right off with operating systems, you know, operating systems, you can see in this picture, multiple of them is literally just the application that uh, is in charge of uh, meaning the interface between the, your, your hardware and your software of your computer. So pretty much it just performs basic tasks like management, uh, you know, process management, networking, security, etc. So, you know, we, we give this context because at the end of the day, when we are working in DevOps, we have like two environments will be or two architectures, if I might, I might say, Windows and Linux. So, you know, the, everything comes down to these two, two ones. And then we can see like the architecture itself of an operating system. Once again, it's just an application, a software that connects or talks with the hardware, you know, the, the physical part of your equipment, your laptop, your mobile device, your even your console video games, etc. Everything has like to have a, this operating system in order to connect to the, to the hardware and being able to, uh, you know, translate the, the inputs that you're doing, like in your keyboard into your computer. And from there, execute your commands, your application, develop applications. So it's really like one of the most important parts of, of computer or of IT. And as you can see this diagram itself, uh, you know, you have in the top the application software that would be, you know, pretty much any application that, for example, this Google Meet application that is running on top of the operating system. And that's the operating system, the one that is, you know, in charge of translating, you know, the system hardware like CPU memory. In this case, my webcam, for example, this device and translate it into the kernel and doing the translation as well into the application, in this case, me. So you guys are able to see me and hear me, right? So that's the, like the main architecture of an, an, an any op operating system. Um, and after we want we want to show you like windows architecture how it, it has you know some specific components uh, you know again we have the application layer and everything in the top then you will have like the kernel uh, stuff in the middle which you know are all the libraries that your operating system will use in order to translate your uh, specific directions into the kernel and then the hardware which are at the bottom uh, we can see in windows a lot of libraries uh, you know like the, the famous DL, dlls that you know are the ones that save pretty much the instructions to work with the operating system then we have the linux library uh, linux architecture sorry it's about the same you know you will have the software and the application layer in the top and then you will have like your kernel uh, interfaces the kernel you know system and then you know those are the ones that will connect into the hardware and you know that's literally in high overview where an operating system is and you know windows and linux architectures themselves right so now we jump right away into bash scripting we will now continue with omar oh thanks andres yeah so basically uh we're gonna go through now uh some of uh what bash 101 entails and they're doing some bash scripting so just as an introduction right Bash is a unique shell in the command language. It was created by Ryan Fox in 1989. And uh, it is part of the GNU project, right? It's a free software replacement for the born shell. In fact, uh, fun fact, Bash actually stands for born again shell, right? And uh, ever since its conception, in, uh, it has been used as the uh, default shell for a lot of uh, Linux distributions. And uh, just as I mentioned, uh, Bash is a shell which is basically a command line user interface that kind of exposes a lot of the um, operating system functionalities. And just as Bash, there are many other shells that we can use. 
uh, the first one ever was like the Thompson shell. It was created on 1971, and then over the time, uh, many others came out. Right. Some of the most recent ones are like seashell, corn shell, and uh, some of the newer ones. Uh, we found while researching this workshop was the MU shell, which is actually based on built-in Rust. Uh, so yeah, after this small kind of intro, I'm going to take over the presentation and I'm going to go into my um, trusty shell environment, uh, which you guys might recognize. I mean, it is VS Code. And uh, we're going to start running some um, basic shell commands, and then we're going to do uh, bash scripting. So first of all, I'm going to run the very basic uh, shell uh, bash command date. So that is going to give us the current date of the host machine, right? Uh, we can check uh, which processes are running on the host machine by doing the BS command, which stands for processes. And as you guys can see, I have only my instance of my console instance running. Uh, then if uh, my console didn't have the, um, this very useful prompt of what is my current directory? I could use the print working directory command to get to that, right? That is going to give me the full path of the current directory I'm currently located at. Um, I can use the list command, right, to get a list of all the directories and folders uh, that I have, you know, on my current directory. Uh, next, we're gonna, you know, do some clearing. This is a very useful clear command. And I'm going to navigate uh, to that documents folder using the change directory uh, command, right? Uh, over here, I'm going to create a folder using the make directory. I'm going to call that demo. Oh, we're going to call it demo two. And uh, we can you know, go into that as well. And I can see that it is currently empty. Uh, I'm going to create a new file over this directory, and I'm going to use the dash command for that. And I'm going to say, uh, hello world.txt. Right? I can see that it was created, but if I concatenate uh, you know, the contents of this file into the console, uh, I'm going to see that it is uh, currently empty. So now I'm going to populate it. And I'm going to populate it with simple strings, and I'm going to use the echo command for that. So the echo command is going to just print stuff back to the console. So I can use echo print, and that is going to you know, print back. Uh, but I can redirect the output of this command into a file using the right angle bracket, right? So I'm going to say echo print, and I'm going to redirect that into my uh, hello world.txt. Uh, by doing this, then concatenating that back into the console, I'm going to get hello world.txt. I'm going to get um, that string, right? Uh, a far more useful command is going to be the find command. That is going to allow us uh, to pretty much search our file system uh, based on different patterns if we want to get uh, uh, some files or some directories. So we're going to say find over our current directory. And I'm going to say, uh, give me everything that's a file. Right? For now, we only have hello world. right? Uh, but if I go back into documents and I run the same command, I'm going to see that I actually do have uh, some other files in here. I can narrow down this search by passing in the name flag. And then I can say, give me every file, no matter what it's called, using that file card. Uh, but it needs to be a TXT, right? So I can run that. And I see that I have a few. Uh, this is very useful, right? Because we can locate files. But I can also pipe the output of this into other commands. So I can. I can use the exec flag, right? And I can now pass in, oh, let me just clear that so it is more visible. So I can pass in the exec command. And I'll say that I want to concatenate all the you know, data that is on, on those files uh, to, this, to, the, to the console. So I'm going to use the cat command that we saw before. And I'm going to use curly braces. Those curly braces are going to represent the each uh, line of output from our find. And I'm going to close the exec block using backslash semicolon. And when I execute this, I'm going to get all the data from those files back into the console. Uh, the last command we're going to see today uh, before going into scripting is going to be the disk free command. Uh, this is going to basically allow us to get information on like 
total space and available space in a file system. So if I run this, uh, yeah, it's not very human readable. It's going to give us like, you know, the uh, like uh, volumes that I have on here, uh, but it's not very readable, right? We can use the H flag, meaning human readable, and that is going to give us the amounts in terms of like gigabytes and megabytes and stuff, and it's far more uh, intelligible. Uh, and this is very useful, of course. We want to know like our host machine has what disk available and whatnot. Cool. So now we're, we're going to clear this, and we're going to go into our bash scripting examples. Uh, we're going to start very basic. Uh, we're going to do uh, some greetings, uh, quote unquote, um, command, I mean, script. And uh, basically, what we want to do is like print just uh, hello, uh, hello, Omar, for example. So first of all, whenever we want to do, we want to create a bash script. Uh, we need to use the sh extension, right? And to start, we need to provide our path to the bash executable. Uh, for that, we always start with a shebang, that is a hashtag and a exclamation mark, and uh, the path to it. If you guys are not sure where that path is, you guys can use the which command and say which bash. And that is going to give you guys the path. Uh, this works, of course, uh, with other executables. For example, I can run which uh, Python tree to know uh, where that is in my machine. And I can see that it is on the Miniconda you know, directory. Um, so moving on, I'm going to echo a uh, very simple message. I'm going to say, greetings. And I want to print my name. But my name, I want to provide that as an input for that command. And bash actually gives us a very useful um, way to access positional arguments uh, from our scripts, and that is the dollar sign variables. So for example, dollar sign one is going to be the first positional argument from our script. If we have three, we're going to have dollar sign one, two, and three. Uh, but for this case, this is going to suffice. Uh, so we can do that. And we can run this by saying sh greetings dot sh. And I'm going to provide my name, right? That's going to say, oh. Nice. Wrong directory. So we're going to do that, and it's going to say, hey, greetings, Omar, right? Because it is coming from the console. Uh, let's see. Moving into a, a bit more involved example, we're going to create a script that checks uh, whether a number is even or odd, right? So for that, of course, we need a number, and we want the user to get uh, to input that information. Uh, but this time, we don't want to use positional arguments. We want the user to be prompt by the console, right? Uh, so for that, uh, we can start with the read with the read um, instruction. And we can pass in the P flag. That means prompt. That is going to allow us to print a message for the user. So let's say, enter a number, right? And lastly, we're going to set, we're going to provide the name of the variables. And the scheme is going to be number or num. Uh, then, I mean, just to test, we can echo that into the console. Uh, when we want to use the value of a variable, we need to say dollar sign and the name for that. So we're going to do sage uh, even odd dot sh. And we're going to say six, six. Uh, so of course, yeah, we want to check if it's even or odd. So we're going to use uh, if statements for this, right? So we say if. We're going to set our statement in square brackets. And you guys should remember to leave uh, some spaces there, uh, because it might not work if you don't. And uh, we want to use arithmetic expressions here in Bash. We need to do it using this syntax, dollar sign and double um, curly braces, I mean, uh, parentheses. And uh, we're going to say num mod 2, basically. If that is equal right, to 0, that means it is uh, even. right? So we're going to say then, and we're going to echo a simple message. We're going to say um is even. Else, it's not. right? It's num is odd. And to finish off our um, if statement, we're going to say fi, which is kind of like the inverse of if. right? Uh, we can save that, and we can run it. So we're going to clear this. And we're going to say 6. And that is 6 is even. 
right? We're going to clear it, and we're going to run it again, and we're going to say three. And three is on, of course. And uh, cool. Now, moving into a, our last example for today and a bit more involved, uh, we're going to create a script that um, creates a backup for a specific um, folder in our machine. So for that, uh, we're going to receive what is the source directory for a backup as an argument, like we did on our first example. Uh, so we're going to say, and we're going to be validating uh, the inputs in this case. So from the get-go, we want to check if the user actually did provide an argument for a script. So for that, we're going to use another if statement. And we're going to use a special variable from bash, which is uh, sign hash, uh, which is the number of positional arguments the user provided for the script. So basically, uh, if that amount is not equal to one, it kind of means the user did not provide anything, right? So we want to provide, we want to, we want to input the usage of our script. So I'm going to paste this, which I have prepared, and uh, which basically is usage. Um, dollar sign zero is another special variable. It usually is the name of our script. So that's going to say usage backup that is h uh, source directory, which is the positional argument that we need for our script. And we're going to exit one, right? Because that's kind of an error. And uh, we can test this. Uh, we can say sh uh, backup sh, and we're going to provide anything. And of course, we get our error message. But if we do provide something, that is going to be successful. Cool. So moving on, we are going to be um, saving that variable. Uh, I mean, that argument in a variable. So it's going to be source directory equals our positional argument one, right? And we're going to construct the backup directory from it. So for that, we're going to say, uh, source directory, right? It's going to be cool. Backup, right? And uh, we're going to say date, and we're going to provide a format for that, right? And this seems like a lot, but it really is just a lot of concatenation. Uh, so dollar sign using square, I mean using curly braces, uh, kind of helps us like delimitate where the variable is. So in this case, because we are working with like directory paths, that is very sensitive. You could have like special characters, you could have like spaces, and we want to preserve that. So we use this curly brace notation here uh, to like concatenate the variable. Then we have backup, which is just text, and then kind of like in the same vein, we want to concatenate the output of another command in here. So that's why we use date. Uh, that's what we use um, dollar sign uh, parentheses here. So now that we have our backup directory, we kind of want to do another check, right? We want to check if this um, source directory is actually uh, a valid source directory, like if it exists and if it's not a system file, uh, right? So for that, we're going to use another if statement. Uh, but we're going to check you know, if, if it's not a oops. If it's not a valid directory, then we're going to print that back to the screen. So basically, we negate using the exclamation mark. And this minus D, this flag, is going to check if the directory is valid, meaning it exists, and whether it's not a file system directory. Uh, so we're good to go here, let's say. That. And then we're going to echo a message if it actually does not exist or if it's not a valid directory. And we can close it with by. Cool. And uh, I guess the last thing we want to do is also whether or not the backup directory exists. So kind of similar. Instead, we're just going to check if it exists, right? I'm going to copy this uh, for the backup. Cool. And uh, again, I'm just going to print a message that I have prepared beforehand. And I'm going to exit one again, if I. Cool. So after all this setup, uh, 
we can finally do uh, our backup. So the first thing we're going to do is use that very useful make directory command that we saw before. But the input for this is going to be the backup directory, right? And after we do that, we're going to use the copy command to basically copy uh, all there is in the source directory into the backup directory. So we're going to provide the recursive flag. So it kind of does that, you know, to the copy all of its contents and the children's contents. And uh, the, I mean, the argument for this is going to be our source directory. We're going to append a forward slash asterisk so that it is, that's a wall card, and that's going to take uh, basically all files, all directories, and that is going to go into a backup directory. And uh, once we do that, I'm just going to print um, another command. I mean, another echo message. You know, just say backup completed, uh, files from source directory are copied to the backup directory. Cool. Uh, so now we're going to execute this. And uh, hopefully, one round of the break. And uh, yeah, let's do, let's print this working directory. Let's say I want to backup. Everything on week zero, right? Everything we've worked on so far. So I'm going to run sh backup dot sh, and I'm going to provide this. And I was going to say, hey, it completed the backup. So I'm going to go one folder up. And if I list all my files, we're going to see we have the week zero backup from today. And if I go into that, I'm going to see that really I have all the files uh, from today. Right, and documents is going to have everything and so on. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys. This was the um, demo for today. Uh, on our next session, we're going to keep diving um, some other concepts from bash scripting. So definitely um, look forward to it. And uh, yeah, we can. I'll just I pass it on to you so that for our Q and A session. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tamar, for that really really good presentation. So. Yeah, now we are on the QA section. So if you guys have any questions what we have covered today, please don't hesitate to, to ask them now or perhaps later on, on chat. I think Roberto raised since, yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, around line 9, there was this. Uh, in line 9, there was date. Date was added as a parameter or 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 was it added uh, by the bash uh language itself oh do you mean here date yes the date word uh, the date variable where it came from uh, it, it does bash can bash add date by itself or do you have to pass it as a parameter oh gotcha no so basically this is kind of like running a function so i'm, I'm basically running the date command in this uh place here so just like the one we saw initially, like I run it on the uh, on the console, that date command. That is what I'm running here, except I'm passing in a format for the date. That's why at the end we get this, you know, 2023-10-05. And uh, Bash is recognizing that I want to pass, that I want to concatenate to my string the results of that, because I'm encasing it in the dollar sign parentheses here. OK, thank you. Cool. Nice. So anyone has any other questions uh, from your address? Yeah, if there are not, I think we can conclude this first session. Uh, literally in the 30 minutes time frame that we, we specify. So really, thank you very much, everyone who joined and had time you know, to, to start learning with us. So if everything goes well, we'll see you guys next week. Cool. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.